Hi everyone, in this tutorial I will show you how to paint this mountain with a lake and a reflection of the mountain and trees around it. I'll have all of the supplies listed down below. This tutorial is also available in real time on my Patreon along with 5 other tutorials that I've already uploaded on there. My Patreon is a place where I'll be uploading weekly new real time gouache painting tutorials every single Monday. So if you enjoy my real time tutorials and you'd like more tutorials to follow along with you can join my patreon and your support will also mean that i can continue to film more real-time tutorials for you guys so hopefully i'll see you on there and let's get into this tutorial i use a pencil to do a quick light sketch of the painting so i place everything into position and make sure it all fits nicely within the frame then i go in with a kneadable eraser and lighten the lines a bit more i'll also have the reference photo linked down below so you can also refer to it during this whole painting I'm starting with the colors Burnt Umber, Primary Blue and White on my palette. And first I'm just picking up some white paint using my flat brush and I'm just filling in that top right corner where the sky is. It's a really bright white. And then I mix a really light blue for the distant mountains. I mix a lot of white with a little bit of primary blue and I tone it down with some Burnt Umber so it's more of a grey blue. So the further away the mountains are, the paler they are. So I make sure that the first layer is very light. Afterwards, I switch to a round brush so I can paint with a bit more precision. And if you take a closer look at the reference photo, you'll notice that at the top of each mountain, it's a little bit darker. And that way you can differentiate between the different layers of the mountains as well. So at the top of each mountain, I paint it a little bit darker and I just have this gradual transition until it gets a little bit lighter. So the more toned down you want your blue to be, the more burnt umber you can add into the mixture. And the more burnt umber and blue that you mix in, the darker the paint will be. So as the mountains move forward, they get a little bit darker with each layer. I also place some ultramarine blue on my palette and I mix that into the existing mixture. And for the mountain on the far right side that's a bit closer than the rest of them, I paint it a bit darker with a bit more ultramarine blue mixed into it. Then I'm ready to work on the main mountain in the foreground and that one is the darkest because it's most closest to us. So I mix in ultramarine blue, burnt umber and some primary blue and I just start to block in that area. This time the base of the mountain is a little bit darker and it gets lighter towards the top. So I'm starting off with a little bit of a darker mixture and then as I move up I'm adding more white into my mixture. I also mix in a little bit of yellow to push the blue a bit more towards green. I actually spent quite a bit of time working on this mountain. I went back and forth a few times. The first layer actually was a little bit too sheer. So after it dried, I went back with a second layer just so the color was more opaque. And then after that dried, I realized it was a little bit too dark overall. So I wanted to make it a bit lighter to push it back a bit because the darker it is, the closer it's going to appear to the viewer. So I want it to be further away in the distance. So I went over it again with some lighter paint and then once I was satisfied with that, I moved on to painting some details along the edge of it. So I'm using a liner brush just to paint on the tree line on the mountains and I'm just nudging my brush up and down along the top of it so it creates the illusion of a tree line so the mountain is not so perfectly smooth. I also switched back to my round brush to blend that out a bit. In hindsight it would have been better to have worked on it while it was all wet so that way that top line would blend in a bit more easily and a bit more seamlessly with the rest of the mountain but I managed to still fix it in the end so it blended together naturally. Then I move on to working on the trees that are just in front of the mountains and the further away they are the more blue they appear. So my first layer is just the same mixture I was using for the mountains but a little bit darker and I just paint that base layer in and then use the same technique of nudging my brush up and down to indicate a tree line. And then after that I decide to work on the lake first because everything else will be painted on top of the lake so we might as well paint it in now so that 
when we paint the other elements we can just paint it on top and we don't have to go back and forth between fixing up the edges of the lake and the things we paint on top of it so for the lake i'm using primary blue with the existing blue mixture from the mountains and i'm mixing in a lot of white and a little bit of yellow and i just fill in that whole area and the edges don't have to be perfect because we'll cover it up with trees later so i just fill in that whole area first and then i'll come in and paint the reflections of the mountains and some of the clouds in the water Now I want to mix up the color for the reflection of the mountain in the water and the water is a little bit more green so I add in a bit more yellow into the mixture. So I'm mostly using primary blue with a little bit of yellow but to tone it down I add in some burnt umber and I also mix in a bit of ultramarine blue and then I just paint in where the mountain reflects into the water. I then switch back to my round brush so I can paint the edges with more precision and along the edge it's a little bit lighter so I mix in a bit more white into the mixture and I try to get a smooth blend between what I just painted and what I had laid down before. So to help me do that I first try to mix the in-between color and then I go in with a clean damp brush and just lightly smooth out the two areas so that they blend together seamlessly. Then to create the ripple effect in the water, since the water is not perfectly still, there'll be some movement in it. So I use my liner brush and I just paint some horizontal strokes along the edge of that reflection. And I also go in with the lighter color, so it's mostly a light blue, and I paint on some more horizontal strokes just to blend the two together. Then using a clean, damp, flat brush, I just smooth out the edges so it's not so harsh. To paint the reflection of the clouds in the water, I use a dry brushing technique. That means that my brush is really dry with barely any water in it, just a tiny bit of moisture. And I go into clean white paint and I pick up the paint with mainly the tip to the belly of my brush. And I use that to paint on wispy white strokes on the paper so it looks like it's clouds reflecting from the sky. It's essential that your brush is dry so that when you apply the paint to the paper it's going to create that wispy effect. Also if the brush is very dry it means you're applying paint that's more thick onto the paper so it's also unlikely to reactivate the layer from beneath so that way we can get a really pure clean white paint on top of the lake that we painted in blue. You don't want the white to be really wet so that it will start to reactivate the blue and mix together. Once I finish with the clouds, I go back to working on that distant tree line, but I noticed that it has dried a lot lighter than what I initially placed down since dark colors in gouache will dry lighter. So it can be difficult to predict whether you have the value right the first time you place it down. So I mix up more ultramarine blue and burnt umber together and I paint that distant tree line again. I don't worry too much about the right hand side of it because that will be covered up by a little island of trees. So again I'm going back and I'm nudging my brush up and down to create the tree line. Then I want to work on the tree line that's a little bit closer to us so I've placed some permanent middle green on my palette and I mix that with the dark blue mixture so I'm mixing more of the green in and this is just a base layer. We'll paint the trees on top of it afterwards. So I block in the area where I know the trees will go up to and again I don't worry too much about the right hand side. I'm switching now to my liner brush and I mix in some white and some yellow and a bit more of the green. 
and I start to paint on the distant trees. Since they're a little bit closer this time, I actually flesh out the details a bit more. So for that, I just start by roughly placing in all the tree trunks and then to paint the trees, I'm just doing quick horizontal strokes. These trees don't have to be too detailed since they are still quite far away. So just simple horizontal strokes will make them look realistic enough. After I paint in the tree line, I paint in the reflection of it. The reflection is more green and a little bit lighter, so I mix in white and yellow into the mixture that I used to paint the tree line, and I basically just reflect it by painting it upside down. I start with a lighter layer, and then on top I also paint in a bit of a darker layer, since I'm reflecting the trees that I painted before, which had trees that are a bit more distant and far away, and then trees that are a bit closer, which get darker as they get closer. Now I'm mixing up black and permanent middle green to mix a really, really dark green. And I use that to block in the base for the island of trees on the right hand side. I'm following the edge of the lake and I'm just blocking in the base of where the island is. And then for the trees, I also want to block in the base of it. So I mix in a little bit more white and green into the mixture and I block in the top part of it. This will just make it easier for me to paint trees on top of it later as I already have a blocked in base to work with. I switch back to my liner brush again so I can paint really thin trees and I'm starting with a layer that will be lighter than the layers in the foreground. So I'm using the same mixture as what I used to block in the top of the base and I just paint in a few trees. Then I'll gradually make the mixture darker and darker as the trees move into the foreground. To make the mixture darker, I just add in more black and I use this to paint in a second layer of trees.
Next I want to carve out some of the details on the bottom of the island so I've placed some yellow ochre on my palette and I mix it with a little bit of black and some white and some of the green and I just place that at the bottom of the island. And to get a smooth blend between the yellow ochre I just placed down and the black, I just go in with a clean damp brush and just smooth out the edges. Then I also carve out a bit of the ridges in the island by just using some black paint and going along the edge of the island. And then I paint on some of the highlights from the light hitting the edge of it. And for that I just use white mixed with yellow ochre and I just highlight the very edge of it. Now I want to paint on another layer of trees that are even closer to the front so I mix even more black into that mixture. And you can go a little bit darker than you think you need because remember in gouache dark colors dry lighter so you can overshoot a little bit so that when the paint is dry it's going to be the right value. Then I want to paint on the shadows cast from the trees onto the island. So the light source is coming from the right hand side, which means the shadows are being cast towards the left. So I just reflect the shadow down onto the island. The island of trees is looking a little bit flat so I want to add a bit more depth to it and to do that I just need to highlight some of the trees so I mix more white and permanent middle green into the mixture and just a tiny bit of black and I start to highlight some of the trees that are more in the center of the island because there is light entering into the center of it so I want to create more space in the center and differentiate the trees that are further away in the background and the trees that are much closer. You can highlight towards the right hand side of the tree since that's where the light source is coming from. Then it's time to paint the reflection again and the reflection is getting darker and darker because the trees are getting darker as they move to the foreground. So I mix a darker green by using the permanent middle green and black and some yellow and I just again reflect the island. I use a bit more yellow ochre to fill in the rest of the bottom of the island just to differentiate that part from the reflection.
and then I paint on the rest of the shadows cast from the tree that fall across the water. Some of the reflections face more towards the left, whereas some of the reflections are pointing more downwards and starting to tilt towards the right hand side. To make the reflection look more realistic, I use a clean damp brush to blur the edges so as to imitate the ripples in the water. By using a brush that is a little bit damp, I can reactivate some of the green and that way it starts to just blur out those edges. You don't want your brush to have too much water on it, just a tiny tiny bit will do and then you can just lightly reactivate the edges of the reflection. Then it's time to work on the island of trees on the left hand side and I'm following the same process as what I did on the right hand side so I'm still using permanent middle green mixed with black to block in the base of the island and the trees. I first go in with a lighter green for the trees that are a little bit further away and then I add in more black for the trees that are closer to the foreground. Using pure white paint, I outline the base of the island. Then I mix up a lighter green for highlights, so I mix more white into the mixture and I highlight the right hand side of the trees. At the same time, I also paint in some foliage that is sitting around the base of the trees. For the foliage, I'm just using a stippling motion and I concentrate the highlights towards the right hand side.
Then I mix up a green for the reflection and this time it's an even darker green so I'm mostly using the permanent middle green with some yellow and a bit of white. I like to paint in the tree trunks first so I roughly know where they're going to be placed in and then I'll go in and paint in the trees upside down. Afterwards, I use the same trick of using a clean damp brush to blur out the edges. The final step in this painting is just to paint in the trees and the foliage in the foreground and I'm just using black and a permanent middle green to block in the base for it and then I'll go in with my liner brush and I'll place in where all the tree trunks go and I'll paint in all the trees and then I'll also use stippling motions to paint in the foliage and then I concentrate the highlights towards the right hand side of the trees and the foliage. So that's it for this painting. You'll just see that my paint gets lighter and lighter as the highlights get brighter. This step did take me a little bit of time to do, so just take your time with it. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and you'd like more tutorials that are in real time, you can find this tutorial along with five other ones already uploaded on my Patreon. The real time version of this tutorial is around two hours and 40 minutes. So if you prefer to follow along with me in real time, you can check out my Patreon. I'll have the link down below. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope you found it helpful. If you recreate it, feel free to tag me on Instagram. Hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye. Thank you.